Good evening. Welcome back to another edition of the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, July 26, 2020. I'm your host, Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net. You may be wondering about the strange title to this week's video, but I thought it was kind of appropriate. Etiquette on leaving a party. The party is, of course, the market. And the market as of the last week has been relatively boring. It's kind of been a, a party that you don't really want to be at. And the way to handle yourself in such a situation is to exit gracefully. And oftentimes in the market, that means not pressing your luck too much and not getting into lots of different positions uh, that you think are going to work out, but really have more of a 50-50 expectancy. So to that end, we're going to go through all the major averages in this video, work up a full technical uh, detail on all of them so we can get a good idea of where we're at currently and where we're headed going into the next week. I'm also going to talk a lot about Fang Man in this video. As you know, these are stocks that I day trade all the time. I also use them very much in my weekly options advisory. And so far, only two of those names have reported, and it's also been pretty lackluster. No big gaps up, no big gaps down. And I'll tell you what else we have on tap as far as the rest of those names uh, going forward. We're going to take a brief detour through the market profile as well, which is basically just confirming everything I've been saying. Sometimes the added dimension of time in the market profile can show us a lot clearer than the two-dimensional charts, uh, the fact that there really isn't any strong buying pressure or strong selling pressure uh, in either direction right now. Last but not least, the trade of the week is going to be something that I hope you can take away from and use for possibly the rest of this year or maybe even longer. You should probably know by now that I'm talking about gold long. I've been rinse repeating these long call verticals with my options uh, advisory subscribers, and I plan on doing it uh, basically until the wheels fall off because uh, gold is really on a tear. And we're going to look at the charts and point out the fact that it's actually very close to going to the prior all-time high, which I think is going to set up even more trades in the future. Without further ado, let's get into it. S&P 500 daily chart. This is going to be the first chart that we look at to sort of get a handle on why the, the party is not all that exciting uh, right now, so to speak. So in looking at the action this week, obviously pretty lackluster in that we ended up right where we started. If you look at the last five days, and I'll actually draw this a little, uh, little bit tighter so we can see just the five days, which would be these, we really ended right where we started. There's the opening of the five-day period, and here's the close of it. So really the market actually didn't advance, didn't do much of anything. Uh, we did take out this prior high, that's a bullish sign, but then we closed back underneath it. We were not really able to get any sort of follow through. If the market can catch some footing here, obviously we're still looking at a potential move up to the prior uh, all time high. Now, when we look at the other majors, here's where things get a little bit dicier as far as, especially in the NDX, because I found it noteworthy that we had two highs here that were somewhat equal. We had a channel top here, and then we retest, we kind of almost retested the channel top, but we came a little bit shy of it, and that caused the market to sell off, and now we've caught ourselves here at the channel bottom. So this is actually going to be very, very key in this coming week. I want you guys to pay attention, and of course I will be myself, as to whether or not the NDX is able to hold Friday's low because it is at a channel support. If not, the target has to be the 50 MA, which is the relatively round number as well, 10,034. We'll call that just 10,000. So that's, that is a potential for the NDX to uh, move down there. Remember that it can also sometimes happen this way where we could ride the channel and then fall. That's, that is a potential scenario as well. So I'd be looking at that to me as weakness if I saw some small body candles in this area with a kind of a weak advance, and then that could set that up. Now, if we move on to the small caps, they've really kind of been all over the place. And this index probably better than anyone, I think, uh, really characterizes the, the whole exit the party gracefully dynamic because really nothing is going on and there's been a lot of false starts here. So you have a balance area here. You have like four days kind of lining up and then you break out of balance. You, you take out this high as well. You break out of the balance area, you move up over the prior highs that are here. And you do something very bullish after that, whereas you balance for three days, correct? And then you go higher again, you break out of this little balance and you push higher. But then in pushing higher, if you notice, you make 
a doji here, which to me is always a sign of indecision, and especially a doji that has equal opens and closes from the prior day. So it's really not much of a breakout at all. And on Friday, the Russell sells off. And it sells off where? Back to the low end of this balance. So I think there's potential for small caps to go lower. It's also not been re uh, respecting its trend line really all that well. It's kind of a messy one here. And then here we're kind of right at it again. So that, that essentially is the situation with the majors. Now, if we look at Fangman, as I was saying in the, in the introduction that I wanted to talk about, we've only seen reports thus far from Netflix and Microsoft in the Fangman stocks and Tesla, although Tesla is kind of an honorary member. But I wanted to mention those three because those are the three of the, the really big marquee names that I look at that have reported uh, thus far. And if you look at Netflix, obviously the report happened here. There was really no advance. We had a rally up into it. It was potentially a not potentially, I should say, it really was more of a buy the rumor and sell the news. And once the, the numbers actually came out, the stock actually did a whole lot of nothing and since then has dribbled lower. So this 50 MA is going to be key because you can see that Netflix has found support at its 50 in prior uh, sell offs So that's really where my focus is going to be next week to see if it does hold the 50. If not, then we could be headed all the way down to the round number 400. Continuing on, Microsoft is the other name that also reported. Again, mousing over here, the crosshairs. Earnings were reported on that green bar, right where the crosshairs meet. And again, nothing really happened. So again, the 50 MA is going to be the key. Are we going to hold it or are we going to sell off to the prior high? I think personally the prior high, because it's very close to the 50 MA in this 190 area, would be a really prime area to pick up Microsoft for a long trade. That's something I'm going to be uh, looking at because it was a prior high. It took us a little bit of time here to resolve it. Then it finally broke out. And I'm thinking that that could be supportive. All right. Last but not least on that short list, Tesla. Again, I think kind of a disappointment rally uh, as far as, you know, on earnings, basically disappointment for those people holding into earnings rally up. That was kind of a way squiggly line. Apologies for that. Um, rally up. They report, not a heck of a lot happens. They have this huge bearish engulfing candle, which not only engulfed the prior day, but more importantly, took out this, I should say the extremes of this green bar, took the whole, engulfed like the whole thing. And that leads to a gap down on Friday, which ends up holding the 20 MA. But the real support for Tesla is all the way down here, just a hair under 1,200. Keep that in mind. If the stock keeps selling off, you're going to be want to be you're going to want to be looking at a potential long entry in the 1,200 area, where the 50 MA is going to meet it. Okay, let's discuss a little bit of market profile now. There's just a few nuances that I want to talk about, all of which to me are really pointing to this. Not, you know, not even so much lackluster price action, but just price action that's really just not good to trade because there's a lot of false signals. So, for example, taking it all the way back to here, we had a balance area here. This is a this is a three day balance. And then we do what we're supposed to do. We break out of balance to the upside. We close strong here. And the next day we go even higher. We establish value higher and we have what I would call a two day balance area. And then you have a high that's only in the overnight session and Thursday the market sells off. But in doing so, look at the structure here. If I could just show you this clearly, look at the big amount of single prints in between. That is a sign of emotional selling when you have the single prints in between. It's kind of a, a long liquidation type of dynamic as opposed to a longer term sellers type of dynamic. So these are all just single data points, but they're data points that I carry forward. So for instance, if the market was to find its footing early next week and start to rally, I would just remember those data points in my narrative of thinking, aha, the day that the market you know, kicked off its selling on Thursday, that was poor structure. There was a lot of single prints in between, probably not really indicative of, of stronger sellers because they wouldn't act like that. I'll just carry that forward and then it would make me a little bit more bullish, especially if we were to travel back up through this area. Friday comes around and we clearly establish, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, clearly establish value lower outside of range. We do take out the overnight low here. We have a new RTH low here underneath the overnight low. But then when we close, 
we actually close back inside of range or excuse me, ins inside of the overnight range. I apologize, we do, we do close below. So overall, it's, yes, it's a bit bearish, but the point I'm trying to make is that when you have this sort of action that's hot and heavy to the downside on the Thursday, this was not really the type of candle, I shouldn't say, not candle, I apologize, market profile distribution that I was expecting to get. It's a very balanced distribution. And anybody who is trading actively on Friday would remember that it was a lot of chop. It was an extreme amount of back and forth, back and forth, right? We had constant 100% retracements in the market uh, back and forth. And stronger sellers just wouldn't act that way is the point I'm trying to make. You know, they would carry the market further, especially when they're making a fresh two-day high. They would, you know, potentially, they would have plenty of potential, I think, to take it further. So if we are to see more selling, I want to point everybody out point out to everybody, I apologize to this balance area high, which is 3174.50. This is noteworthy because this was a multi-day balance. It's like a five or six day balance. If you recall, I talked about this in prior videos. I would expect that to be supportive on the way back down. That's gonna be a definite line in the sand for me in the early parts of next week if this market uh, was to uh, trade lower. If it goes beyond that, remember you've got virgin point of control here. That's the fairest price to do business on that July 13th that is not yet tested. And if we continue to go lower, then obviously the lower end of the balance area would be where I would be targeting. And let's wrap it up here with the trade of the week. This is uh, yet another uh, gold vertical and selling against risk reversal, however you want to call it. I think it's the third time I've done this in the weekly options advisory, but this one is more than just a look back. I want you guys to think about this really as a look forward because I'm going to show you what's going on technically uh, in gold. And I really think that there's a lot of opportunity here to have multiple long gold trades going on, at least into the end of this year and possibly beyond. Once gold uh, gets going, it's oftentimes a rally that can last many, many months or many years. So gold had a phenomenal week. As you can see here, we broke out out of this balance area here to the upside and moved up pretty sharply. Um, and in the bigger picture, if we flip over to the weekly, very, very strong candle. But here's where things get really fun to look at, really noteworthy is the fact that we are close to the all-time high in the GLD. We're actually closer, I think, on the GCs, but it doesn't match up exactly. But look at the GLD. We're about one maybe a half a month away, maybe two weeks, I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. It can happen as fast or as slow as it wants from the all-time high. And we can see this even clearer if we look at the, the futures on the GCs. As I was saying, look at how close they are. We closed on Friday at 1904.6, and the high here is 1923. So we're literally going to be right at it. We're just about to break out. And obviously, uh, anybody who, ha who has been looking at charts for even a short amount of time will tell you that this sort of rounded bottom action is very, very bullish. So I would expect to move potentially next week at least just to this uh, prior high. And then I'm going to be reassessing what I'm doing with my gold position. This is... Uh, trade of the week that's actually been going on for a little bit. Uh, I think we got into it maybe a week and a half ago on the gold. And as you can see, it's really the same trade that I've been doing uh, multiple times where I pick a call vertical that I want to be long of, usually on a $5 spread. And I try to get that for about a buck 50 to a buck 70 maximum. In this case, it was a little bit expensive because gold had already just started breaking out of that balance area, I think, and I, pay, I ended up paying a buck seventy. But also, more importantly, I wanted to have uh, strikes that were closer to the money so, because I really had, an, I had a good feeling that we were going to really start rallying out of that balance area. So I wanted to have some, you know, I wanted to pay up a little bit. And then the uh, other stuff is just the shorts against it. So you can see we sold the 165 puts for about 26 cents. Those have gone down to zero. And we haven't sold all of it yet, but we've got three units out of four of the 187.50 call. And those are at an average of about 30 cents right now. And the reason for that is because I'm seeing that 187.50 in the GLD way above the all-time high in GLD. You can see the all-time high in GLD here is about 185.85. So I chose that 187.50 strike as a call that I'm trying to sell against. And of course, my modus operandi, so to speak, of this trade is the same over and over. It's just get long that, that $5 wide, about a month out, 
and do everything you can between now and then to sell call credit above it or put credit below it and or I should say and uh, and whittle that debit down as, as low as possible so that at some point when you can get out of that $5 vertical for $4, $4.25, $4.50, you've got your costs down to say under a dollar, which is fantastic. So you're making like a, a four to one uh, on the outlay. And, and that's pretty much it. You know, that, that's uh, right now uh, in tying in with what I've been saying in the intro to the video and in the video itself that I'm just not that thrilled about the market. To be honest with you, this is really our only position right now. This is uh, literally the only thing that we have uh, going on right now in the weekly options advisory. We're just managing this trade. And of course, I'm looking for new stuff uh, all the time. But I think that that in and of itself is a lesson because uh, the advisory can be very active at some time, six to seven trades open at one time and sometimes only one to two. And that really and I think this is true for everybody else. Maybe, you know, I can you can make the argument that this is perhaps just how I am seeing the market currently. But if obviously I have to trade the way that I see it is that you really have to adjust your aggressiveness to what the market is telling you. Don't think that you always need to be in a million trades or you have to be just pedal to the metal all the time. Right now, I'm just not seeing it all that clearly. So I'm I'm not really, you know, so I'm not just heavy in a whole a uh, lot of positions. That's basically it. When things, uh, you know, if there's a setup that seems more clear to me, maybe perhaps once we get these Fangman earnings uh, out of the way, then things things will be different. That's also another reason why I, for me particularly, I'm a little bit quieter right now than usual is because I like to concentrate on Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, uh, et cetera. And a lot of those names are all going to report at the same time next week. And because I dabble mostly in weekly options, that precludes me from taking uh, trades in those names. That being said, let's wrap up our video right here with a quick look at uh, just what's gonna happen next week because the earnings are pretty hot and heavy. Facebook has a topping tail on its monthly, but that's not important. Let's go into the weekly here, still chopping around. This is going to report on Wednesday, that's 729. And then Thursday is gonna be the deluge of these Fangman earnings because we are going to have uh, Google, Apple, Amazon all on the same day, which is uh, Thursday. So there's uh, how Google's looking on the weekly. Apple sold off pretty heavy this week. It's really kind of in need of a pullback. Uh, it's pretty obvious this stock is a buy on any pullback. And I think Amazon is honestly a, a buy on any pullback. This week was just a really choppy week in, in Amazon. But truth be told, I would really love to see this lower on earnings because it's just always a buy. So that's something I'm going to be looking at in the coming week, uh, getting pretty excited about watching how those uh, stocks act uh, on Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And that's all for this week. Thank you, as always, for spending a little bit of your weekend with me. So be careful out there. The market is not really showing its hand right now. We've got some divergence with the majors and next week should be hot. That earnings season is really going to heat up with a lot of that fang man that we were talking about, Amazon, Facebook, Google, etc., all hitting at the same time later next week. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.